Now we're going to talk about using Float to monitor and control your project schedule. Float is a project manager's best friend, but the project manager has to understand the difference between total float, free float, and understand the concept of negative float, particularly if you're using scheduling software. So what is float? Let's understand it through a simple little example. If we have a start point here, it's a milestone, start milestone. And from that start milestone, once we start the project, we have an activity called A. And that activity is 10 days long. Now we also have activity B, and it's five days long. And at the end of each of these activities, which are happening in parallel, we have a project finish milestone. There we go. So we understand that if we start both activities at the same time, if activity A starts on day one, it will finish, we call that the earliest possible finish time, on day 10. If activity B equally starts on day one, it will finish, of course, on day five. Yes, day five, correct. So the earliest possible finish time for B is five, earliest possible finish time for A is 10. The earliest time that this little project can finish is, of course, day 10. Yes, day 10. Now, if we work backwards, the latest possible finish time for this project is also equal to day 10 because we don't want it to slip past our promised uh, delivery date. As a result, the latest possible finish time for A is going to be 10, and the latest possible finish time for B is also going to be 10. In other words, we can slip B by up to five days without affecting the project finish date. Hence the definition of total float. Now, if we decide to add another activity, let's say activity D over here. And D is one day long. And let's say we've, we decide that we are going to start D after B is finished, and then we can finish the project. We now have the earliest start time for D as being day six, and of course the earliest finish time, if we consider day six as starting on the morning and finishing at five o'clock, it's a full day's worth of work, the earliest finish time for D is also going to be day six. So now our total float on this path is equal to four days instead of the previous five. Now, Let's add another activity. Let's call it activity C. And let's say activity C is two days long. So again, the project starts, activity C starts on day one, finishes on day two, and then feeds into activity D. Now, D cannot start until both B and C are finished. So the earliest start time for D doesn't change. But you can see that there is a three-day gap between C and B. In other words, we can delay C up to three days without affecting the start time of D. Hence the definition of free float. The amount of time we can delay an activity before it affects any other activity. That's called free float. So how do we apply this? The best way is to look at an example. So here is a little project, a landscaping project, and you can see total float next to each bar, and you can see free float in the spreadsheet. If a task with free float is delayed, in this case we delayed flower beds by two days, you can see that free float is used up, some total float on flower beds is used up, but it does not have any effect on any other activity. If you delay pathway, which had zero free float, you can see the immediate follow-on effect on plantings. So if a task has zero free float, we have to ensure that resource coordination takes place and good communication if that predecessor task slips. Now, negative float. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look at the critical path. Deck is on the critical path. It has zero total float and zero free float. 
if DEC is delayed, there is an immediate follow-on effect on the project finish date. Now, if our client told us that the finish date cannot slip beyond the 26th of June, then we tie that finish date with a constraint. And then if DEC slipped by the same amount, you would see that negative float on the schedule. So this is brilliant because if you're using scheduling software, you can see total float and free float very quickly and very easily. And now there's this concept of negative float that shows up if you have constraints in your schedule, which acts as an early warning sign to project managers and schedulers to warn us when we are missing a potential deadline. So to practice some of these concepts, let's dive into the scheduling and controls course material to practice the concepts on a live project.